Good morning, and welcome to worship on this wonderful, happy Pentecost day. Our service today is morning prayer, largely from the Book of Common Prayer. Our opening hymn today is number 641, Creator Spirit, by whose aid? shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit which was given unto us. O God, our Creator, you have brought us the gift of a new morning. Help us to leave yesterday and not to covet tomorrow, but to accept the uniqueness of today. By your love celebrated in your word, seen in your Son, brought near by your spirit. Take from us what we need to carry no longer, so that we may be free again to choose to serve you and to be served by each other. In the silence of your heart, release to God those things you hold within you that separate you from God and from your neighbors and ask for forgiveness. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon us. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon us. I believe that God forgives and sets us free. We believe that God forgives and sets us free, and at the day's beginning, we commit ourselves to following where Christ calls and to loving one another. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make haste to help us. O Lord, make speed to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, the Lord's name be praised. And we join together in this canticle, the Jubilate, Psalm 100. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, 
and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Ezekiel. And it's a familiar one. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our psalm reading is Psalm 104. The refrain is, Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great wide sea with its living things, too many to number, creatures both small and great. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and renew the face of the earth. There move the ships, and there is the Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, 
and so you renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Tyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our gradual whim him today is the first verse from I Feel the Winds of God Today. I feel the winds of God today, today my sin.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when she comes, you will prove the world to the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever comes and whatever he hears, and will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's kind of hard to sit still on Pentecost. It's such a wonderful time. But there are some serious things to think about in our lessons today. We begin with a place that we might recognize because our own places feel very much like it today. That valley of the dry bones. So much seems to have dried up around us. So much of the things that we would run and see and talk and enjoy. Being close to one another, being free to go where we wanted to go, do what we wanted to do, when we wanted to do it. Free to enjoy this wonderful place that we call Earth, God's creation, and all of God's people. And yet it has become dried up in many ways. Of course, that lesson talks to us in a bigger sense as well, that our lives within us, not just around us, but our very selves can easily become dried up. And no longer do we feel the breath of God. No longer does it flow through to us. And that's what Pentecost is about. It's why we need a Pentecost. And why this is such a wonderful holiday to be celebrating at this time. We need to feel again the vitality of God's spirit working in us. Even though we cannot share it or experience it together, yet it is still blowing into us and through us. And it's still calling us to be that breath of the Spirit to others as well. Yes, it may not come meeting face to face, but it can come in so many other ways. And one of the wonderful things that we have experienced in this pandemic is that we've learned so many new ways to communicate to share that spirit of God, both over the telephone, on all the online options. Look at us today. Thanks to the gift of those in this parish, and particularly Ross, who's taping me today, we have the ability to share a whole service. 
share that wonderful sense of God's spirit with each other. And that's something we'll continue to do because often there are many people who are left out of our parishes in many ways because they don't have transportation or mobility or don't have the abilities to communicate or be communicated to. And so we will have a new method to reach out. And we reach out even now to people who have never been in this church and yet follow the church services. And that's a wonderful gift that God has given us in these difficult times. We continue with our lessons today. We see the, the wonderful story with all those funny names when the apostles and Peter are speaking particularly to the crowds gathered in Jerusalem for a wonderful festival. And it says that they spoke to them in the language each of them understood their own native languages. Well, languages are more than just words or rules of grammar. Languages convey our culture, our very beings, and while we can learn to speak another language, oui, je parle français, mais je ne suis pas française. I'm not a French person. I, I do not fully understand the culture and therefore do not speak the language as if it were my own. And that's so true when we communicate with one another. We have to take the time to speak in ways that can be understood. This is not about hearing special tongues being said or having that gift of glossolalia, which is so-called you know, speaking in tongues. It's about communication. It's about listening to the other, hearing where they are so we can respond in the best possible way and making sure we try hard to communicate in a language they understand the kind of speaking, whether it's a different tongue of language altogether or whether it's our own tongue, but somebody who speaks from a different culture within the English-speaking world, for instance. And that's what communication is about. And the Holy Spirit is here to help us do that. We need to take that effort and allow ourselves to feel the Spirit working in us and moving in us, that we will find the way to tell the stories that we need to tell, to tell the stories of Jesus Christ and God's gifts to us, our salvation that comes through Jesus. These are the stories we need to find the words and the means to tell. And again, we are challenged in this part of the pandemic to do that. But how much better will we be when we leave our houses and go out and speak to one another face to face and take the time to find the ways to communicate in the best possible way? The gospel tells us that Jesus says, it's a good thing I'm going away from you now because now you will have the Holy Spirit. Well, yes, we are all given the gift of the Holy Spirit. We don't always know the right ways, whether to communicate or the right ways or the kinds of decisions to make. That's why we need the Holy Spirit breathing life into us. It's very easy to give up on trying to, to follow God's way or taking the time, because so often we feel we're too busy or we just want to get it over with, done with, and get on to something else. We're rushed through our lives sometimes. The Holy Spirit dwelling in us helps us to slow down, to remember to think about where God is calling us to be. What is God's way? What is, what is it that we're being called to do and to be? That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's also the gift of life, because so often it's easy just to say, I'm so tired. I just want to put my feet up, lay down and go to sleep, or have a nice nap, or sit down and watch television, or there's so many other things that are easier to do than to face the problems of this world. And for sure, there are many, many problems. We need to take the time to listen to the spirits, allow it to work in us, and feel the wonderful presence of that spirit breathing life into us, inspiring us, 
allowing us to dream dreams that are bigger than we've ever dreamed before, see things that, that we never saw before, and see the possibilities that are out there. So often we give up on the possibilities. Then we tend to go back and live in the past and not dream of going forward into a wonderful future. So let us enjoy this day. Let us enjoy the power of the Spirit working in us and always allow God's Spirit to be with us both intentionally and when we need it. I'd like to conclude today, or this reflection, with a litany. It's a litany that comes from a service in Australia that began with the whole congregation, adults and children, getting together to make kites. And they processed into the church flying kites and carried their, church, their kites in. But one of the children made a remark about the kites, which inspired this litany. And here we go. I'll read both my parts and your parts, but it is in your uh, information that you've gotten online. Those who fly kites know that kites are earthbound and cannot lift and soar until they are caught by the wind. People and churches are earthbound and cannot be themselves until the wind of God's spirit lifts them to fly. Kites are not free to thrust and move until they are let go to explore the skies. People and churches are not free to love and care until they can let go and catch the spirit which is love. Kites have no power and direction unless they are caught and controlled by the wind. People and churches have no power and direction unless they allow the Spirit of God to move within them. Let us pray. O oh God, may your Spirit lift us from being earthbound and set us free to soar, to explore, to have direction and purpose. O oh God, help us to fly as people freed by your Spirit to live and to love. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And our intercessions and thanksgivings for today were prepared by Claire McInnes. As the first disciples did on the first Pentecost, let us now unite in prayer and pray for the world, the church, and all in need, saying, Lord, come and bless us. Come, Holy Spirit, come upon us. Come, Holy Spirit, enliven the church to speak your words of forgiveness and salvation in every language and tongue. We pray for Archbishop Justice, Justin, sorry, Pope Francis, our primate, Linda, our diocesan bishop, Sandra, and for the people and clergy of All Saints Cathedral in Halifax. Pour out your spirit upon witnesses of every age, gender, and nationality. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Come, Holy Spirit, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. We have exploited and damaged the earth. We are thankful for the rain, but also welcome the sun, for the farmers, 
so that their crops will be abundant. May they be shared generously. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Come, Holy Spirit, dispel human arrogance and establish leaders who are humble of heart. Speak peace into all, world, all the world, especially in Israel, Gaza, Syria, Myanmar, Afghanistan, and so many other places where there is violence. May the language of love be heard to overcome prejudice and fear, and may the afflicted know your comforts. And let us give thanks that through the efforts of the United States and Egypt, there is a lull in the violence in the Middle East between Israel and the people of Gaza. We pray that in the spirit of Pentecost, where we are all called to come together, whatever our backgrounds, whether it's religion or any other thing that divides us, that we may all know the spirit of God calling us back to peace. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Come, Holy Spirit, enable us to celebrate diversity, to reach out in the language of your love to newcomers to our country and community. Grant us the spirit of love, that we may love according to your commandments and reach out to all in need, whether destitute, anguished, imprisoned, neglected, or ill. We keep in our prayers today Alma, Joan T, Ross, Dorothy, Russell M, Martin, Helen, Melba, Moira, Father Elliot, Marilyn K, Edie B, Simon, Nancy M, Vera L, Ken, Sylvia, Margaret D. Taylor, and those we name now in the silence of our hearts. Embrace them with your love. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Come, Holy Spirit, bless the life of this parish and this community. Guide our pastor, Reverend Tory, and we remember in our St. Peter's family, Vera L., Nancy McBee, Art, Glenda, Vera M.D., and their families. Holy Spirit, breathe in all of us, accompany us, inspire us, and comfort us. Intercede for us, and strengthen us in heart, mind, and soul. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Holy Spirit, you make us children of God and joint heirs with Christ. We praise you for all the saints who called on your name and who now know the fullness of your salvation. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Come, Holy Spirit, and radiate through us the infinite goodness and mercy of God. Receive our prayers and lead us where you wish us to go. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. We also ask you to bless the life of this community and this parish. And in our national church our cycle of prayer, we particularly pray for the Anglican Church of Melanesia. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember the Cathedral Church of All Saints, Halifax. <clears throat> and all who are ministering there in many different capacities. And we pray this collect for today. Almighty and ever-living God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of eternal life, keep us in the unity of your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Together, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And a few things before we, we go. Um, announcements. I want to announce the 60th wedding anniversary wishes to go out to Helen and Malcolm B. Last week we had an enjoyable uh, virtual coffee hour uh, that took place on Sunday evening. It was suggested that we should try meeting perhaps on Sunday morning after worship time. So this week we will meet at 11 a.m. this morning. Um, this morning. Uh, that'll give you time to make your coffee or your tea or Caesars or mimosas or whatever you want to make. Um, and, and join us as we just chat with each other and get to see each other face to face, unmasked, but over uh, the networks. Uh, if you haven't got the link, uh, please call me. Uh, the number is 221-4728. Uh, but otherwise, the link has been sent online, and I will have to send it to you that way. Uh, but if you have it, just click on the link. It will take you to Zoom. Just check in with your computer video and your computer audio, and you will get to see one another. And let's see. Uh, also, online, St. Peter's virtual auction is up and running. Check your email for details. I'm told. Now, Pentecost is often called the birthday of the church. So in celebration of that, we are going to acknowledge that birthday. And we have a bit of birthday cake here just to make it truly real. And our wonderful lighter. So, get ready to sing, and I hope Heidi's going to be cutting in with, with this thing. Happy birthday. of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our closing hymn today is God Save the Queen on this Victoria Day weekend. 